Well, bless the Lord and welcome to the Back to Basics Ministries online church where Jesus Christ is Lord and the Lord is using this ministry along with other ministries to take his word to the people, to take his word to the people. This ministry can go where a lot of uh, brick and mortar churches cannot go. This ministry can go where I can't even go, but through the internet and through YouTube and through Facebook and through uh, our Twitter account and other accounts, we can take the gospel to all parts of the world. And the beautiful thing is people can receive the word of God and be saved. That's amazing. It's amazing. Jesus said greater things than these shall you do. And so we give God the glory, the honor, and the praise we Welcome the Holy Spirit. We thank the Holy Spirit, and we thank you. And I want to encourage you uh, in your ministry, what God has called you to do, don't be discouraged. Don't give up. Don't quit. Just partner with other members of the body in Christ and do what God has called you to do. Don't be intimidated. Don't worry about the numbers. Don't worry about the finances. Just do what God has called you to do. You just listen uh, for a few minutes to uh, Kev Kevin Wilson from London, Kentucky. And Kevin said, I'm on a spiritual high. He said, I'm on a spiritual high. Well, praise God. Uh, for those of you just tuning in, let's listen to Kevin Wilson again. He's our friend from London, Kentucky. And Kevin Wilson said, Pastor Carter, you Sister have my Loretta. permission. He said, you have my permission. God bless you, Sister Loretta. Minister Loretta. God bless you. Praise God. Praise God. We're getting ready to hear from Kevin Wilson. Kevin said, Pastor Carter, here, here's some CDs for you. You have my permission to play these on your, your ministry, and you have permission. So we don't own the rights to this music, but we have the, the artist's permission. We're going to hear Spiritual High. Listen to this. Kevin, Kevin Wilson, I mean, listen to every word that he sings. I'm on a spiritual high. Yes. 
subject to Christ. My life is new. Jesus says I have you. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Kevin Wilson says he's doing all right. <laughs> he's on a spiritual high. He's on a spiritual high. And you can get on a spiritual high too. Ask the Lord if you've not already done so. Ask the Holy Spirit to fill you with his presence. Ask Jesus to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. Now, if you're born again, you can be filled with with the Holy Spirit, which means you can be on a spiritual high every day, no matter what's going on, as, as we say, no matter what's going down, Ryan Trogler, no matter what's going down, we can be on a spiritual high. Hey, a shout out to everybody. Shout out to Jackie Fisher. Jackie Fisher. Jackie lives in Kentucky. Hey, Jackie Fisher, do you know Kevin Wilson? Good morning, Pastor Carter. And good good morning. morning. I do know Pastor uh, Kevin Wilson and met him at Summer Fire. Praise the yeah. Lord. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, how far is London, Kentucky from Dry Ridge? It is about an hour south of me going by Kevin Wilson, uh, by me driving, it's two hours. <laughs> oh, so you drive like I drive, huh, Jackie? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, praise God. Hey, whenever you, if you get a chance to see Kevin Wilson before I do, tell him I thank him very much for being a blessing to this ministry. And uh, I send him a letter once a month. And uh, But I certainly am blessed that we can be blessed through his music and he sings from the heart thanks jackie we're going to ask you to come on again in a, in a few minutes and to share the scripture we'd like you to read first first samuel first samuel 15 20 to 23 jackie can you do that yes i can all right first samuel 15 20 to 23 ladies and gentlemen that's our precious sister jackie fisher from dry ridge kentucky <clears throat> and we met jackie personally um in uh indiana last s summer when she graduated from the paul bagley school of prophecy and jackie fisher is a great woman of god a shout out to jackie and to russell and their family in Dry Ridge, Kentucky. Now, we don't play favorites. We've got Ryan Trogler on. We've got uh, um, Loretta Jackson on. We've got many, many other people on, people on on their telephones. And I want to give a special shout-out today to Ben Beckler, my friend Ben Beckler from Oklahoma, whom I hadn't heard from in a while. Ben's on with us. And he and his family, I want to give a shout out to Dustina and her family <laughs> as they're traveling from Tennessee to Georgia. And uh, I know once I start calling names, I mess up. So uh, if I didn't call your name, I still love you. I hope you still love me. And uh, praise God. We just thank God for you. We're going to um, do this. We're going to play another song by... Kevin Wilson, and from his CD, uh, Jesus Lifted Him Up, okay? And then Kevin said, Kevin says this in this song, I've never been down so far that the Lord couldn't touch me. Hey, that's a testimony. That's a testimony. Hey, look here. I've been down, ladies and gentlemen, and some of you have been down. But Kevin Wilson is going to sing a song, I Know I Can, and he says, I I've never been down so far that the Lord cannot touch me. Maybe you're down today. Maybe uh, you're at the end of the year and you're depressed. 
Maybe you're going through something, but listen to this song as we play it by Kevin Wilson, and it's called I Know I Can. Then we're going to uh, call on uh, Ryan Trogler to uh, pray for us, and then we're going to ask Jackie Fisher to read the scripture, but let's take the song first, okay? Praise God, praise God. That's my main man, Kevin Wilson, London, London, Kentucky. I've never been down so far that the Lord couldn't touch me. And hey, ladies and gentlemen, some of us have been down. I mean, down. I mean, how low could we go? I'm not, I don't know about you, but I've been down. I've been down. But thanks be to God, hallelujah, who, who, who did not count it robbery to come down and lift me up. And he's done that for, for you. He's done that for us over and over and over again. I'm excited about Jesus. We don't serve a dead God. We serve a living God. I'm excited that the Fisher family, all of the families in the house together today, praise God. I'm excited about Ben Becker and their family in Oklahoma as they travel and as they listen to this service, I'm excited about Ryan Trogler. Happy birthday, Ryan Trogler. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. May you have many, 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 many more. I'm excited about uh, Christina McDaniel and Tommy McDaniel in Oklahoma. I'm excited about Sandra and Mike Inman in Texas as they travel by car and they're listening to this service and I'm excited about our friends in Kenya and 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 I'm I thank God that God has healed it Bishop Elijah our pastor of the new church that we helped to build in Kenya he had surgery 
Two weeks ago, he's doing much better. Praise God, and that church is thriving. We just praise God. God is the mighty God, and he is no respecter of persons, and he's reaching out all over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't have a God who's in a box. He's a big God, and what a mighty God we serve. And I'm excited about you. I'm excited about what he's doing in your life. And so we're going to ask uh, Ryan Trogler, uh, our birthday uh, a guy, uh, to come and, 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 and uh, share, uh, lead us in prayer. Ryan, could you do that for us, please? Morning, church. Morning, pastor. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for their birthday wishes. Um, <clears throat> now, I hope I do see many more to come, but if not, I'm, I know where I'm heading. <laughs> Hallelujah. We know where we're heading, don't we? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Heading north. <laughs> heading, <laughs> heading up. Heading up. As you right. say. Heading up. <laughs> All, right. All right. All right. Heavenly Father, we want to we wanna thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for all of our sins and sending into heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father. And Lord, we just we just want to thank you for making another day and letting us rejoice in it. As long as you know, you're know you going to be there with us, so we're going to rejoice in it. And Lord, we want you to uh, bless this online ministry and bless and bless Pastor Carter and give him thank you for giving him the, the courage and the knowledge and the wisdom to teach us your word today. And Lord, we want you to bless this great nation as well as all nations around the world. And we just want, we just want to thank you for your word, and just we just want to thank you for everything that you keep doing for us, and keep walking with us, and keep talking with us. And we we just want to give you all the praise and the glory for that, Lord. So, Lord, we just come to you humbly and just say, Lord, we just we thank you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. In Jesus Christ's precious name, Amen. 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 Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, and give our greetings to your precious wife, Tara and your daughter Jenna, and uh, you all be, be safe up there in Pennsylvania. There's ice and snow in, 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 in the area, but we thank God for keeping you all, and um, praise God that you're not in out there in Montana or somewhere. Uh, may God bless people all over this land, not only this land, but all over the world. Praise God. We thank God. Okay, okay. Well, we're going to ask God. Uh, Mrs. Jackie Fisher, and she will come and read the word for us. And our word comes from 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 20 through 23. Uh, good morning, Pastor Carter, and good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. You all. Uh, I'll be reading today from 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 20 through 23. And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal, and Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as the iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. First Samuel fifteen, twenty through twenty three. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you for reading the word and for sharing the word and and I praise God, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today we we want to look at a subject entitled God's cure for rebellion. Uh, God's cure for rebellion. Now I want everyone to just listen carefully. Uh, uh, to, to the message, and, and if you're in any kind of bondage, ladies and gentlemen, any kind of bondage, and if you're, you're true to yourself and you're really true to God and you search your heart because <clears throat> the Holy Spirit 
will will tell you if you're in bondage. Um, if you say, search me, O Lord, and know my heart, try me, and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, I'm quite sure if there's any wicked way in any of us, the Lord is going to reveal it. And then once he reveals it, don't get mad at the preacher for preaching the word, but thank God that he loves you so much that he's willing to show you weaknesses in you and me and show you uh, areas in your life where you're coming short or where I'm coming short, and then he gives us space to repent. He gives us space to ask him and to receive from him the correction. The problem with a lot of people, my friends, is a lot of Christians, my friends, is uh, most Christians never want to admit that they're wrong. Most Christians never want to admit they're wrong, and that's called that's called pride. It's also called idolatry, because if you're not willing to confess your sins, if you're not willing to confess, I was wrong, or I'm wrong, and, and you're too stubborn to do that, then you fall into this scripture, 1 Samuel 15, uh, 23, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. That's what God told Saul. Saul was a, a, a good king. He started off well. He started off on fire for the Lord, but then he got caught up in pride. He reached the point where he wanted to do his own thing rather than what God had commanded him to do. And the problem with this, ladies and gentlemen, is you and I can fall into that same same rut. We can be on fire for Jesus. Oh, yes, Pastor Carter, I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm fire baptized, and I'm running for my life. Yes, tr this is true. But if you're stubborn, you're heading to hell. If you do not repent, you're heading to hell. You say, oh, well, Pastor Carter, I don't, I don't agree with that. Uh, well, let me tell you this. I see. I don't argue with you. I let the word, the word of God will argue with you. The word, hey, hey, you take your argument to the Lord. The Bible says in, in uh, Romans 6, 1 and 2, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin continue any longer in it? So if you've got a problem with pride, you've got a problem with, with, with iniquity, you've got a problem with stubbornness. You're just plain stubborn. Nobody can tell you anything. And, and you've made up your mind. Yes, you're, you're spirit-filled, you're Holy Ghost-filled, but you're not Holy Ghost-led. And if you've got a, a problem with pride and, and you have to contend with everything and, and you, just, you just won't let go, you're going to hold on to something and make it work. You're going to make a triangle fit into a circle. Uh, it ain't going to work then the Bible says if, you, if we continue in sin, grace will not abound. And without grace, we cannot make it to heaven. We can't go north, uh, Ryan. Without the grace of God, we cannot go north. We will go south. And south in, in the spiritual realm, we're talking about uh, going to hell. God does not want anybody to go to hell. But stubbornness can take you to hell. Rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft. Rebellion is just like Saul going to the witch of Endor. When we hear the word of God and we know the word of God and we rebel anyway, we're going to do our own thing no matter what God's word says. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says that is like the sin of witchcraft. It's, it's just the same as going to the Wickham church. It's, it's the same as seeking uh, uh, spiritual authority from a source other than God. And any time we seek spiritual knowledge or authority other than God, it's called witchcraft. It's called witchcraft. And witchcraft is permeating this nation, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a whole government that is engaged in witchcraft and has turned his back on the word of God. Well, I beg to differ with you there, Pastor Carter. I beg to differ. Listen to this. Listen to this verse again. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. 
because thou hast rejected the word of God, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. Well, what are you trying to say? Is, is there some, some uh, innuendo there? Or are you trying to uh, say something to us? Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a king or a prime minister who, or a leader, and that leader goes off and into his, his own or her own uh, way of doing things and rejects God's word, the whole nation can go down the drain. Here's the danger, ladies and gentlemen. Here's the danger. And the Holy Spirit has brought this to my attention, and I'd like to bring this to your attention. In our nation, and in other nations too, in our nation, as we come to the end of another year, there are areas in our lives where many of us are still hard-hearted. We have made our political decisions, and the danger in America is that many Christians, uh, many call themselves evangelicals, and uh, I call myself I call myself an evangelical because I preach the word of God. But there's a group of people who call themselves evangelicals, and they have formed their own American version of Christianity. And the American version of Christianity is you get a political leader, and you stand behind that political leader, and no matter what that leader does or says, you call him or her a Christian. Ladies and gentlemen, the danger in this nation right now, and we're on the verge, we're on the brink. I don't know what 2020 is going to bring, but we're on the verge of, of, of destruction because most Christians in America have made up their minds they're going to support a political party. They're going to support this person or that person. Ladies and gentlemen, the danger there is what about God? What about God? Well, the scripture says God puts kings and presidents in, uh, well, kings and prime ministers in office, and he can put them in and take them out. Yes, God allows a person to become a king. He allows a person to become a president. He allows a person to become the speaker of the house. He allows a person to become the majority leader. But if that person dishonors God, then uh God is not going to contend with that person but for so long. You will see what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. You will see what I'm talking about in this nation. Whether it's the head of the household, if the husband persists in rebelling against his wife, if the husband has a girlfriend on the side and he keeps on keep, keeping on committing adultery, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to come out in the wash. It's going to come out. It come, may come out in the form of him, him catching AIDS. Then he infects his whole family. It's going to come out in the form of uh, 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 he, can, he can be hit by an a, a 18-wheeler on the highway. God has many ways of per punishing a person who persists in sin. It can come out with rebellion in your children. It can come out with disease and sickness. It can manifest itself with the loss of your home, your personal property, loss of your job. Adultery is a sin. If you're committing adultery, you're exposing your entire family to whatever, whatever. It's like witchcraft. You're rebellion. You rebel. You're seeking sex from someone outside of, of your marriage. Or if a wife uh, contends with her husband and, 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 and uh, will not honor him as the head of the household, uh, that's idolatry, ladies and gentlemen. That's rebellion. It's the sin. Well, he, he's not saved, as I hear so many wives say. Well, my husband's not saved, so I don't have to pay attention to him. Yes, you do have to pay attention to him. It, per, he, perhaps he's not saved because you've got that attitude to him where he's a drunk. He's an alcoholic. He's on opioids. Well, uh, the Bible says that your deportment, the way you carry yourself, the way you honor him, might sanctify him so that he can be saved. Ladies and gentlemen, I cannot tell you the number of households in America where there is uh, uh, destruction looming because husband is cheating against the wife or the wife dishonors her husband and then the children rebel against mom and dad. Rebellion, ladies and gentlemen, is like the sin of witchcraft. And I'm here today, hallelujah, to tell you God has a cure for rebellion. God has a cure for rebellion. We do not have to do uh, what, uh, what Romans 6, 2 says, uh, 
1 and 2, um, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin continue any longer in it? We are dead to sin. Jesus Christ paid the price. The moment you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, you and I became dead to sin. It's when you go back into sin. It's like a pig uh, 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 eating his own slop, going back to his own slop. It's like a dog eating its own vomit. Why would you go back into the sin that God delivered you from? That sin was destroying you. It destroyed many people's bodies, destroyed many people's minds, destroyed many people's uh, households, caused people to lose jobs, caused people to get down so low as Kevin Wilson just finish singing, I was so low, I was not so low that the Lord could not touch me. God can touch you wherever you are, no matter how low you go, but he will not do this unless you take the cure for rebellion. Well, what are we talking about, Pastor Carter, rebellion? Well, a idolatry is rebellion. Well, what is idolatry? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. Idolatry means putting anyone or anything ahead of God. If you put the President of the United States over God, above God, and I've been reading some uh, Facebook articles uh, where the President says he's, he's done more for Christianity than Jesus Christ, First of all, before I spread that, I've got to <coughs> check out, see if that story is, is real. It might be fake news. But if he said it, I feel sorry for him. I hope he didn't say it. I hope it's fake news. Or if someone says, like the Beatles, remember the Beatles back in the 60s when, when John Lennon said, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm bigger than Jesus Christ. And before long, before long, John Lennon was just an anachronism. He was just, he was, he, he, he was no longer in the public eye, and then he got wiped out. Ladies and gentlemen, be careful what comes out of your mouth. Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Don't let any rebellion dwell in your heart. If you place a political leader above Jesus Christ, and, and yes, we elect people to office, and God gives us the ability and the power and authority to elect someone into office. But if you uh, lift that person up and that person, uh, you lift that person up and allow that person to become uh, above the law, then the result is going to be devastating, not only for that leader, but for the whole nation. And it's going to trickle down to your household. But here's the thing. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got some people, they call themselves evangelicals. They read the Word of God. They see the Word of God. They read this same verse that Jackie Fisher just read, 1 Samuel 15, 23. But they give you a different take on it than what I'm going to give you. But the Word is very plain. This Word really does not need any explanation. It explains itself. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. That's in black and white. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of God, he hath also rejected thee from being king. God can reject a president. God, yes, God can anoint a president, and God can reject the president. God can anoint the speaker of the house. God can reject the speaker of the house. God can anoint the uh, 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 president pro uh, temple of the Senate, and God can reject that person. If that person does not obey God, but does what he or she thinks they ought to do, then that person is going to be rejected. The sad thing is, ladies and gentlemen, over 50% of Americans and more, a higher percentage of the church, are so plugged into one particular political party in America. Ladies and gentlemen, do not let politics ruin you. Do not let politics ruin your marriage. Do not let politics ruin your family. Do not let politics ruin your church. Do not let politics ruin your family business. Do not let politics destroy you. Because if you continue, if we continue to, to follow leadership anywhere they lead us, anywhere they lead us, ladies and gentlemen, 
without applying the word of God and without testing the spirit by the spirit, we're all doomed. <laughs> we're all doomed. And, and, and Kevin Wilson can sing it to the sun uh, refuses to shine, but God will not pick us up if we persist. If we persist in following leadership, if we follow leadership blindly, bi blindly, if we're like the three blind mice, three blind mice, three blind mice, See how they run. See how they run. We'll all be running in different directions led by a blind leader. But if that leader, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me now, if that leader will repent of being rebellious, if that leader will repent of being stubborn, if that leader will call upon the name of the Lord, then uh, there will be a change. There will be a change. You'll see a change in the nation. And if you, the head of the household, or you and I who call ourselves Christians, if we repent of our rebellion, if we repent <coughs> of our stubbornness, if we repent of our witchcraft, if we repent of our idolatry, we can be changed. Yes, God has a cure, ladies and gentlemen, for idolatry. He has a cure for adultery. He has a cure for rebellion. He has a cure for witchcraft. We look at King Saul, and King Saul disobeyed God. <clears throat> God told Saul to kill everything in Amalek, everything, every person, every animal. And Saul preserved Agag, the king, and didn't, did not kill the best of the sheep and oxen. And then when Samuel, the prophet, came to Saul, and Saul said, hey, praise the Lord, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, praise God. I just did what you did, what God said to me. I, I obeyed God. Then Samuel said, well, if you obeyed God, then how come I hear sheep? Bah, bah, bah. Or how come I hear the oxen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what's this sheep uh, sound, this oxen sound in my ears, if you obey God? Oh, well, 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 we killed all of the Amalekites, but, you know, Agag's a king like me, so I spared his life. And, and the people, my soldiers, they said, hey, let's take these good sheep and these good oxen, and we'll offer them unto the Lord. And then uh, Samuel said to Saul, um, Samuel said, hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? And we can apply that to the political situation in America today. Okay, uh, all these testimonies and people refusing to testify, people defying the Constitution and people lying under oath. Ladies and gentlemen, has God, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Ladies and gentlemen, when a politician takes an oath to the Constitution, he takes that oath in the presence of God and the angelic beings and in the presence of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When a man uh, takes a woman to be his wife and they stand before the altar and they make holy vows, they exchange vows, ladies and gentlemen, they make a holy promise to God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, and to the audience surrounding them to love and to cherish, to have and to hold in sickness and in health, to, for better, for worse, <clears throat> until death do us part. But when a man cheats on his wife or the wife dishonors her husband, they break those holy vows. And when they continue to do so, then the result is they're living in idolatry. They're living in rebellion. They're living in witchcraft, and they expose their entire family <coughs> to destruction. Just like the leaders of our nation who have taken holy vows to support the Constitution, they place their left hand on the Bible, and they raise their right hand, and they swore. They swore before God Almighty, and yet to lie and continue to lie, the Bible asks us, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin continue any longer in it? And ladies and gentlemen, if you're caught up in this political thing, 
and 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 you're 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 wrapped up in this uh, pol political mess. You're you're a staunch Republican or you're a staunch Democrat, uh, and 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 then whatever uh, uh, this person says, you agree to it. And and I see on Facebook people just put anything out there, anything so and so says, they're gonna repeat. Repeated. And then they even send you a text message. Make this go viral. Ladies and gentlemen, please don't ever send me a message. Make this go viral because I'm not going to make it go viral. No. First of all, I want to check out the source. And I'm not going to repeat anything someone else sends to me. See, God gave us a choice. God gave us a choice. No matter how much I love the president, no matter how much I love uh, the Speaker of the House, no matter how much I love uh, so and so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to test every word that comes out of his or her mouth. And I'm going to test it with the word of God. No matter how much I love my wife and no matter how much she loves me, she ought to test every word that comes out of my mouth. And I ought to test every word that comes out of her mouth. Because rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Ladies and gentlemen, and husbands and wives can destroy a whole household if they're continuing to say things and live things that are contrary to the word of God. That's called stubbornness. It's called idolatry. It's called iniquity. I know there are people, they don't want to hear this kind of preaching. They say, you're not preaching, Pastor, you're meddling. No, 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 the word of God is meddling. The Holy Spirit is meddling. I'm just a, I'm just a postman. I'm just a pipe that the Lord blows through. I'm just a pipe, ladies and gentlemen, that the Lord blows through and he's blowing through me for your salvation for your deliverance <clears throat> and you may say but i'm saved i'm sanctified i'm filled with the holy ghost yes and if you're living in sin you're a liar you're a liar you're a liar you're lying and the bible says all liars will wind up in the lake of fire well pastor Carter, you're calling me a liar well the truth fits then then wear it. The shoe fits, put it on. If you're declaring and, 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 and prophesying and, and declaring and decreeing that you're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, and yet you're living in adultery, you're living in idolatry, or you're cheating on your income tax, you're cheating on your spouse, you're taking drugs, you're uh, drinking liquor, you're smoking cannabis, uh, you're, you're pop popping CBDs, and, and, and Jesus is Lord of your life, yes, you're a liar. Yes, you're a liar, and the truth is not in you. And if I proclaim Jesus is Lord of my life, and I'm doing these things, I'm a liar. And all liars will find their way into the lake of fire. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, pay heed to this word. This word is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God is a, a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It will separate the bone from the marrow, ladies and gentlemen. But we've got to pay heed to it. Over half of this nation, over half of this nation, and, and I'll say at least 90% of the church is, is, is in error, is in danger of being overwhelmed overtaken by their sins because number one the number one sin is pride you can't tell many Christians too much you can show it to them in the word but they're gonna get their own take on it or here's here's what most Christians are doing Ryan throughout America and, and Elijah you know how they do in, in, in Kenya and, and, and Annika you know how they do in Sweden and Bishop Davis you know how they do in Jamaica they will read the word, uh, uh, and, and they ask so-and-so, their favorite uh, prophet, their favorite uh, preacher. Well, what do you think about this? And, hey, 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 if your favorite preacher is, 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 is a lesbian, your, your favorite preacher is not going to preach about the, the, uh, the wholeness of marriage. A man uh, shall leave his wife and leave his father and mother and take a wife and the two shall become one flesh. Or, or if your favorite preacher is, is gay, uh, your favorite preacher is not going to talk about one man, one woman. And if your favorite preacher is an adulterer, your favorite preacher is going to, uh, he's going to skip over Romans 7 and, and 1 Corinthians chapter 7. <clears throat> he's going to skip over uh, uh, verses like flee idolatry. He's going to skip over verses like Matthew uh, uh, um, 3, 8, which says, Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for righteousness. 
And so here's the thing with most Christians in America and many throughout the world. They depend on other people to interpret the Bible for them. Why? Number one, because they don't read the Bible for themselves. And, 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 and if they do read the Bible for themselves, many do not allow the Holy Spirit to minister the Word. The Holy Spirit wants to penetrate deep in our hearts and bring about changes. And so we depend on certain people to read Scripture to us and for us and to give us their interpretation. And most times, especially in this politically corrupt nation of ours, Many preachers are into the pockets of that political party that they support. That political party supports their churches, most of their members, the big givers, the ones uh, 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 paying the, the big heavy tithes. They are members of that party, and most pastors do not want to lose that financial base. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is coming back soon. He's coming like a thief in the night. And, 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 and there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. People are going to be pulling out their hair. They're going to be running to the mountains saying, rocks fall on me and the rocks will not fall on them. They're going to be uh, trying to crawl into caves in the ground to escape the wrath of God. And many so-called Christians are going to be in that number. Why? Because they were too stubborn to obey the word of God. God revealed his word. God revealed what needed to be done. God said to the people, repent, but the people would not repent, and they continued in their ways. Ladies and gentlemen, don't let Satan deceive you. Don't let Satan deceive you. Don't let him deceive you about this government. Ladies and gentlemen, when we have government officials who lie, and continue to lie, and, and continue to put out lies before the people, that is not of the Lord. I don't care what bishop so-and-so says. I don't care what prophet so-and-so says. Jesus Christ is not a liar, and he's not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. Obey the Lord Jesus Christ. This Bible is our schoolmaster. This Bible is the word of God. This Bible is the word of God coming straight from the heart of God. This Bible is the word of God written by the Holy Spirit for our edification, for our deliverance, for our salvation. Do not reject the word of God. As we close out this year, 2019, I want to encourage you to repent of any sins. And I'm going to do the same. I encourage myself to repent of any sins. Do not carry these same sins into the new year. In other words, in the next few days, just repent. In my household, this is a time of fasting and prayer. Fasting and prayer. Fast, seeking God for his will. And seeking God for deliverance from anything that is not of the Lord. Yes, I'm asking God to deliver us from anything that's not of the Lord. I want a holy household. I want to be a holy, sanctified leader, led by the Spirit of God, walking in the truth of God's Word. And if I'm walking in error, I want God to expose it to me, that I can repent. God has a cure for rebellion. Well, what is his cure, Pastor Carter? The cure is found in 2 Chronicles 7.14, which says, If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, I will heal their land. You can apply... Second Chronicles seven fourteen to your nation, to your church, to your civic group, to your family, to your marriage, to your individual life. If my people, those who are called born again believers, those who claim Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, the Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn 
from their wicked ways. Then God said, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. A key word in that verse is turn. Repent means to turn from it. Just stop doing it. What's the cure for, for rebellion? Stop being rebellious. What's the cure for I, 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 adultery? Stop committing adultery. What's the cure for lying? Stop lying. What's the cure for tweeting fake news? Stop tweeting fake news. What's the cure for uh, child abuse? Stop abusing children. What's the cure for taking drugs? Stop taking drugs. What's the cure for drinking liquor? Stop drinking liquor. Stop. Turn from it. The Bible makes it plain. The Bible makes it plain. Do not be deceived. Do not think that you can persist in having your own way. And God's going to let you into heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, it ain't going to happen. But you've heard the word of God, and I've heard the word of God, and we have time to make adjustments. We can go before the Lord today and say, oh, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me. And then turn from it. Just stop doing it. Just stop doing it. And trust in the Lord. Well, I can't make it without uh, uh, so-and-so's wife. Oh, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Oh, I can't make it without my, my Knebus. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, I can't make it with my, without my, 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 my old crow, my Jim, Jim Beam. Oh, yes, you can. Call on Jesus. Jesus Christ is the answer. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Rebuke the devourer. Put Satan back in his place. He's a liar. He's a deceiver. Put him in his place. Turn from corrupt politics. Turn from following corrupt leaders. Follow Jesus. Follow after Jesus. Return to the Lord. As we get ready for 2020, our theme for next year is 2020, the year of our return to the Lord. 2020, the year of our return to the Lord. I'm believing that America will return to the Lord in 2020. I'm believing that Kenya, I'm believing that England and France and Russia and China, I'm believing that the nations will return to the Lord God Almighty, that the nations and this nation will put away our idols, destroy our idols, and worship the Lord God in spirit and in truth. And if you want to be saved, if you want to be saved, ask the Lord Jesus today. Ask him right now to come into your heart. Be your Savior, your Lord, your God, and your King. And trust him. And if you're already saved, but you've uh, come under conviction that you've been a backslider, you've been in rebellion, and then and stop being stubborn, stop being so, so sinful, stop being so hard-headed, and hard-hearted, and ask God to forgive you. Repent. Turn from it. And then trust God for his grace. It's as easy as that, ladies and gentlemen. Father God, bless your people. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this word, God. Your word is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Thank you that you are the God of love, that you're not willing that any should perish. Oh, God, I preach the word that you've given me. Let this word not return unto you void or empty, but let it accomplish that which you have purposed it to do. Let it prosper in the thing where you have sent it. Help people all over the world, all over this nation, to repent and to call on you. Oh God, help our president, help our leaders, help them to repent of their sins. Help the church, help the pastors, the bishops, the leaders of the church to repent of our sins. Help us to follow after you, Lord God and do your word, and we thank you for your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise God, praise God. We're going to get ready to uh, close out this recording, but I always want to let you know that if you're on the go and you listen to this recording, and many people, many people are, uh, uh, are listening to this recording, hey, Sandra Inman, Mike Inman, give me a call. Ben Becker, give me a call. Dustina, give me a call. Or send me an email, or or uh, send a message to my my uh, Facebook page, and 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 
And, and if we can help you in any way, we'll be glad to. I thank God for this opportunity. I thank God for the Back to Basics online ministry. And I thank God for you. Praise God. By the way, we will start again next week on January 8th. We will start again our journey through the Bible with the Back to Basics School of Ministry as we look at, as we begin semester number two, the books of the Old Testament uh, history, the books of Old Testament history, Joshua through First and Second Kings. So go on the website, sign up for the school, and let's get ready for some more studies.